It is an enormous pleasure for me to be here today. This is the first time I take part in a LACNIC event. And this would have never been possible with my team, without my team, Silvio Lucas, with whom I shared an experience in the month of March on a, where I make a presentation on container labs in Paraíba, Brazil, as well as Alejandro Guevara and Henry Alves de Godoy. Without them, I would never have been here. So very rapidly, we already heard quite a lot in Wesley's presentation yesterday, Alejandra Costa too, that in order to have a final and successful deployment of IPv6, a detailed and organized planning is required, bearing in mind those aspects involving message exchanges between devices, particularly taking into account security issues. One of the limitations that we have when trying IPv6 is having testing environments. That is why these testing environments that allow us to test incompatibilities of the devices in terms of connectivity and also to analyze these limitations are what we are lacking, as I said. So the proposal of this paper is to make available a testing environment that is based on the virtualization tool of Container Labs. This will allow us to analyze and understand the functioning of IPv6 in the process of assigning IP addresses to end users using the Slack option. That is the focus of our proposal. So this is not only a testing environment. This is also aimed at providing, providing training. I use this at my university when I teach. And also for government organizers and network operators that promote the deployment of IPv6. The tool we use is Container Lab. I was fortunate to participate in a webinar by Alejandro Acosta and Alejandro Guevara. And when I saw it, I said, well, this has to be my next tool. And I was totally enthusiastic about this. Very rapidly, Container Labs allows virtualization on networks based on Docker containers. There are very many operational systems that can be based on NOS Linux. Some are Nokia SRL. These were the ones that created it. Container Labs arose as a proposal of a Nokia engineer. So I invite you that if you check out the website of Container Lab, there are ongoing updates of the operational systems that join. This is also based on virtual machines options such as Dell, Cisco, and Microsoft. So one of the major advantages of Container Labs is that it enables to share and collaborate with the topologies through the Git repositories. Further important features are that it allows you to create a topology through IML files. And I define here what the devices are and how they will interconnect. I come from the GSN3 world, and this was a radical change in the sense of how Container Labs has conceived these topologies. Regarding the testing environment, quite obviously, I need Ubuntu, Docker. I had to integrate a traffic analyzer that is XShark, which is perfectly well integrated and can analyze Docker traffic. And after lots of testing, I opted for Nokia SR Linux. And in the same image, it defines an instance. I can define an instance as a switch or also as a router. So this was a major advantage. I also had to customize a Docker's tool because I needed a tool to simulate attacks. So I decided to use a Kali distro minimum. I added some dependencies. I added THCP v6 and the toolkit of Fernando Gonzo. So with all this, I had the entire scenario. 
This is an example of the definition of topology. You clearly see clauses and nodes and images and configuration files. All this is interpreted by Container Lab, and it generates this topology you see on the right. Now, specifically, the lab demo that I'm going to share with you consists of, firstly, understanding how this works, capturing traffic of the router advertisements and the router solicitations, and particularly the one of router advertisement. So based on this capture, I then determine, based on analyzing the header fields, I then determine that a node that is connected to a port for which I define a policy, then that I don't allow that node to do router advertisement because this can execute the attack tools simulating being a router that announces these messages so that the other devices connected to the LAN can auto-configure their IP addresses. So just in one port that I have connected the router to, the legitimate router is the one that can do the router advertising. So that is the principle for this testing, and I then extended this based on other RFCs. I expanded it to a second scenario based on uh, RFC 7113 using station headers, how to expand the attack, and I had to alter the rule to mitigate that attack. And I'm showing this briefly live. Oi, oi. Can you see my screen? Can you now? Can you see it now? Perfect, thank you. Okay. So, I have several terminals. I have several terminals that I have logged in through a CH. CH. Thank you. Specifically, this is the rule I have configured in my Nokia CRL device. I created two instances, the first to mitigate this attack of uh, the next header where the uh, attacker can uh, uh, mask uh, the uh, um, shooter and uh, the entry 100 uh, where I do a log to see where the attack is coming from and what does it drop. Those that match a next uh, 58 and CNP code zero, that is a router advertiser. I assigned that rule to the ports that connect hosts. So, from uh, a PC that has Kali Linux, that uh, to him I didn't uh, assign the rule to show that the attack works. <coughs> this attack will announce the prefix 2001-DB8-DBD. That attack <coughs> needs to, uh, will have an effect in this other node. <coughs> see? As a matter of fact, I see it there. What I'm going to do is, well, DH1 down to clean this. There, notice that it hasn't, re it couldn't auto configure the IP until it receives the router advertisement. And here, this is the legitimate IP. This, I'm the same attack. I would do it uh, from PC one, where it connects a port where it applies the rule, and it shouldn't have an effect 
on PC3. And we see that indeed I it couldn't auto-configure the IPv6 global address. I repeat, all this, this is in stage one. I test uh, the different alternatives of uh, the two tools, uh, the IPv6 uh, toolkit, uh, analyzing the traffic, for which I have the possibility by raising XSharp to capture the traffic of all the nodes virtualized in the containers. That would be all. So I'm ready to answer questions. Well, thank you for the presentation of Ernesto Sanchez and Silvio Lucas. Does anybody have any questions? Would you like to approach uh, the microphone? Ayane? Hello? Good morning, good afternoon. I'm Alejandro Acosta of the staff of LACNIC. I wanted to congratulate Ernesto and Claudio. I, knew, I know that Ernesto was uh, deeply involved. I know that uh, you did a great job and you devoted much of your time. It's, uh, there are discussions, many discussions about this. I wanted to congratulate you because of your work. And we invite all those who don't know this to take a look at this because this is a wonderful tool. Thank you. Thank you, Alejandro, for all your support. We don't have any remote questions. We remind the remote uh, participants that they can send questions in the Q&A panel offered by the Zoom platform. So thank you, Ernesto and Silvia. A round of applause for them.